On the ninth day of aircraft, I made a new strike breaker, which is a series of aircraft that I haven't touched in quite a long time because I only reserve my favorite designs and also this particular wing shape and bell shape pretty much. I use a very similar design between all of them. I only use that name for some aircraft, and this one was made as an attempt to make something a bit more like an F-22 in stock parts. It didn't really go well. It, I mean, it has a broken back, a broken neck effectively, but it still has an overall nice form factor, I think, and I do like the look of it. You might be asking yourself, where are the intakes? These engine precoolers act as intakes, if you did not know, and therefore they are in there. There is a cargo bay in here. It is empty. I also... actually... Oh yeah, I did. I, I kind of hooked it up so that it, it minimally clips into the front here, so that uh, I would be okay with using it for my as personal aesthetic uses. Uh, I don't tend to have, I don't tend to like uh, when parts move through each other. That form of part clipping really gets my goat, so to speak. But in any case, yes, it's a new Strike Breaker, and it has afterburners. I want to say the Strike Breaker name started back in KSP like. 0.17 or 0.20 or something like that, back when planes were still very, very new. It was the first fighter I ever attempted to make, and it was accidentally very good, so I was like, well, shit, that's special and important, and so I've only used the name for aircraft that I felt particularly happy with that weren't otherwise replicas, and again, they tend to share the same form factor that is a little bit inspired by an F-22 because it tends to be a rather good form factor for an aircraft, especially a fighter jet. These engines sound a bit quiet to me. I may have artificially lowered them. No, I did not. They just sound quiet to me. I guess my volume is lower than I thought it was. Uh, oop. Okay, yeah. Uh, the thrust vectoring means that you will get a tighter turn if you activate the afterburners than you would otherwise, as well as maintaining a little bit more speed. And you can see this doesn't have post stall maneuverability really, but it has very controllable, very predictable flight paths as it maneuvers, so it's very nice for that particular reason, and I just enjoy it. Now, as for why I was trying to make something a bit like an F-22, I was recently challenged to make what is essentially an F-4 that was designed in the era of the F-22 instead of when the F-4 was actually designed. And as I started working on this problem, I ran into several issues. I tried something similar to this that I will show at a later date, and it was just very difficult. But I decided to make something closer to an F-22 on its own, just to kind of put my mind more into the F-22 side of things, because part of the design process of merging those two aircraft didn't really work right. You couldn't, I couldn't really get it to evoke F-4 and not just be like shitty F-22 or different F-22. And so I struggled with it a lot. And this is just part of the process was this particular aircraft. You might notice that it is actually uh, pitching down in order to maintain the current uh, elevation. That's because this particular piece here, this adapter, has an extreme amount of lift on it. As you can see, we have uh, control surfaces down here. Actually, those are not the control surfaces. What the heck is that that's giving me the extreme down lift on the back here? It is... Oh! Ha! I forgot I put that in there. There is a little... There's a little hidden uh, winglet right in here that is to help keep the balance because else it would be too much. Too much indeed. But uh, that means that if I want to pull up like a nice... Uh, if I want to pull up just a little bit, I can just toggle the SAS to pull up or I can turn it off entirely to go into a very gentle climb, a very gentle pull-up, which is surprisingly useful when you want to use that feature. And, uh, of course, it actually flies relatively stable without SAS. Uh, well, I say that. Until you start doing more extreme maneuvers, like this, where you can just completely lose control, and then regain it as soon as you enable SAS, because SAS is incredibly helpful for such things. Yeah. In KSP, there is no such thing as a stall, so this particular adapter gives us way more lift than we actually need in order to fly this particular jet. But that is useful, so we use it indeed.
in any case, as you can probably tell by now, I've run out of things to talk about. Thanks for watching. And as always, enjoy further mountain climbing with aircraft. Because that's what aircraft are truly for. Oops. Right. This is what ejecting is for. Wait, what? Why did I... Oh, no, I didn't mean to swap. Oof. Bye, rest of my plane. Have a nice trip. Wow, did it like just brush against, oh there we go, I was gonna say, did it just brush against the mountain and stall there? No, no, it just hadn't collided yet, it took quite a while. Speaking of taking quite a while, the only downside about using a parachute is how long it takes to get to the ground. Oh, they stood up perfectly fine for just a split second and then just fell over. GG game. GG.